Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History for our Halloween special 2018 where we'll be looking at the iconic sartorial stylings of that instantly recognisable voodoo favourite, Baron Samdi. Now, Baron Samdi has little to do with our actual Halloween, although of course we are dealing with the dead and the spirit world. In saying that, Baron Samdi's feast day is November 2nd, so pretty close to our own Halloween. And of course, there are plenty of Baron Samdi Halloween costumes to buy online to wear when you go trick or treating. I do wonder, though, as to the cultural political correctness of Baron Samdi Halloween costumes. I mean, after all, we're talking about an incredibly spiritual character in another culture's belief system. In a way, it's like buying a Halloween costume of, I don't know, Jesus. Oh, wait. Yep, I guess when it comes to Halloween, all bets are off and anything goes. I dedicate this episode to my beautiful friend and fellow fashion historian Eurydice. For not only does she love exploring alternative belief systems, but I want to formally apologise to her for being such a drag when we went on that New Orleans cemetery tour a few years ago. I whined and complained all the way through. It was so hot and the guide was so boring. Anyway, E, forgive me. And by the way, if you guys want to see last year's Halloween special, I'll leave it at the end of this video so it plays directly. Okay, let's get our voodoo on. It may come as a surprise to some of you, it certainly came as a surprise to me, that I actually know more about voodoo than I ever expected to. Why? Because a few years ago, I was commissioned to write a book about the cultural influence of voodoo. And look, there's the book on Amazon, Voodoo by Amanda Halle. But here's the thing. I never wrote the book, so why it's on Amazon, I have no idea. I agreed to write the book for two reasons. I thought that writing a book about voodoo would be very Indiana Jones, and also I'll do anything for money. However, after three months of research, I had to throw the towel in. It was so confusing. I had to learn all about African Vaudin, Haitian voodoo, Louisiana voodoo, Santiera, and the Loire, the name given to the voodoo spirit guides, of which Baron Samdi is one, of course. And it was all so confusing and needed so much research that I soon realized that this was somebody's PhD, really. This was an entire life's work of academic research. African belief systems, Caribbean belief systems, folklore. At the same time, I was doing my own academic research. I think I was working on costume of the Middle Ages at the time, and it was all just too much and I couldn't do it justice. So instead, I turned my research into a talk that I kind of toured around with for a bit. Do you do that voodoo, sin, sex, snakes, and the promise of the dusky other? Voodoo's role in 20th century pop culture, where I got to talk about things like I walked with a zombie and live and let die. I was on much more comfortable ground. But it is probably because of actor Jeffrey Holder's brilliant take on Baron Samdi and Live and Let Die that the actual Loire gets such a bad rap. In actual voodoo understanding, this is no Bond villain. Also known as Baron Samdi, he has other incarnations. Baron Cimetier, Baron Cemetery, Baron de la Croix, Baron of the Cross, and his most mischievous incarnation, Baron Criminel, Baron Criminal. As long as you stay on the right side of him, this dude is every fashionista's friend, king of the after party, even if after in this case means after we've stopped living, and the kind of boozing bad boy we just can't resist. After all, he's Baron Samedi. Baron Saturday, it's a bit less impressive in English, isn't it? Because Saturday night is party night, right? And Saturday night is also all right for fighting, so just keep that in mind if you ever evoke his spirit. Suave and sophisticated, Baron Samdi is protector of the dead. The dead are his gang, his posse, his pals. And far from trying to pull the living into the realm of the dead, he wants to keep us out. Why? Because we're just not cool enough for him. It's Baron Samdi who gets to say if somebody lives or dies. If he doesn't think you're ready to join his ultimate after party, then you've got to try again. In his guise of the suave Baron Cimetier, he protects the dead, watching over graveyards and making sure that nobody gets turned into a zombie. However, if you get on his bad side, for example, not honoring your ancestors, vandalizing graveyards or making light of death, then you'll invoke Baron Criminel and you don't want to do that. Baron Samdi is also 
the protector of children. Why? Because children are not supposed to die, are they? And so he's actually quite a benevolent figure if you butter him up. But don't be fooled into thinking he's a kindly older uncle type. Baron Samdi is party central, the ultimate ladies man, and his attributes alone tell you just what kind of guy he is. He is always smoking a cigar. He is the Loire of tobacco with a glass of rum in his bony skeletal hand. Yes, he is the spirit guide of alcohol as well. Baron Samdi loves sex. He loves partying, lust, debauchery, swearing. And there's nothing he enjoys more than a dirty joke. He sounds a little bit like my friend Derek. But unlike my friend Derek, Baron Samdi evidently speaks with a strange, low nasal voice. Perhaps it sounds nasal because his nostrils are filled with cotton in accordance to the Haitian manner of preparing a body for burial. This is his veve or vive. This is his symbol. And you can see it's a cross on top of a coffin. He is a married man, yes. His wife is Mama Brigitte, the only white Loire in the voodoo spirit realm. She's evidently of Irish ancestry, hence her long flowing red hair, and is every bit as bawdy as her husband. Baron Samdi's colors are black, obviously, the color of death, white, the color of life and hope and rebirth, purple, although evidently, People who have been visited by Baron Samdi recently say that he's gone off purple and deep blood red. What a great palette. Let's take an overview of his attire before we break it all down. First of all, traditional Baron Samdi depictions have him with nothing but a skull for a face, whereas others depict him as a Caribbean man with a skull painted on his face. His usual look consists of chic all black, with either a tailcoat or a frock coat, although some renderings have him in a duster, some sort of 19th century neckcloth, and of course his top hat. His accessories depend on the depiction, but skulls and juju dolls often feature, as do snakes, although all of these elements seem more akin to pop culture than to actual Loire characterizations. Interestingly, these depictions are very different to the far more sensible depictions of him like this. Not such a dandy of the underworld here, right? Indeed, Baron Samdi is syncretized to the Catholic Saint Martin of Porres, who does not carry a cane with a skull on the end of it and smoke a cigar. Starting in the second half of the 20th century, there's an ongoing trend to show him without a shirt. I suspect because it's visually arresting to have a skeleton painted on a body. However, as the actual Baron Samdi was such a lover of fashion and finery, I'm not sure he'd forgo the opportunity to wear a fancy shirt. Now here's the interesting thing. I couldn't find a depiction of Baron Samdi in clothing from the 18th century or earlier. The earliest depictions I found of him, he is wearing what seems to be clothing from the first couple of decades of the 19th century, with the tight trouser, tailcoat, and not a top hat, but a tall round hat, as they were known. As I say to all of my students, when in doubt, look to silhouette. So if we just take this museum piece, make it dark, add some of Baron Samdi's signature accessories, for example, a ruffled purple shirt or neckcloth, skulls and feathers, and a snake. This is the signature silhouette. This is Baron Samdi. In fact, it corresponds quite nicely, doesn't it, to the silhouette that Disney chose for Dr. Facilier in The Princess and the Frog. So now I think we're on pretty solid ground in the belief that Baron Samdi started wearing dandyish Western garb at the very start of the 19th century. The question is why? Even among voodoo spirits, fashion is not an island, it's a response. And so what was going on in Haiti in the first decade of the 19th century? Well, Haiti gained its independence in 1804 on account of the slave revolution. And so it sort of makes sense, doesn't it, that this is the point when the Loire began to be clothed in well-heeled Western attire as opposed to African attire. Anyway, Baron Samdi kept up with the changing times. By the mid 19th century, he sported a frock coat and a top hat. And today you can find Baron Samdi rocking a truly rock and roll chic with skin tight tees and ripped jeans. 
Traditionally, Baron Samdi is depicted with glasses, glasses with a missing lens, so he can keep one eye on the dead and one eye on the living. Colour is important to Baron Samdi. If he shows up wearing white, he's in a good mood, and if you ask him a sensible question, he'll give you a sensible answer, possibly. Now, of course, Baron Samdi is a feature of pop culture, well beyond that of the voodoo faith system. But before we look at more playful embodiments of Baron Samdi, I think that possibly one of the main reasons that he's so misunderstood is because of this guy. François Duvalier, better known as Papa Doc, the terrifyingly insane Haitian dictator who based his cult of personality on Baron Samdi, even going so far as to affect the spirit's odd nasal voice. He also started dressing in all black and wearing hats with a higher crown that would evoke Baron Samdi's top hat. Yes, he was mad, but he was also very clever and manipulated the beliefs of many Haitians to control his nation. In fact, there were more than a few of his subjects who truly did believe that he was Baron Samdi. There's a really good documentary on Papa Doc, a uh, Papa Documentary, if you will, as part of the Evolution of Evil series that's available to stream. And of course, you can also find the dictator's creepy interview with reporter Alan Wicker. This is all available online. But let's not get bogged down with Papa Doc and turn our attentions to a far more fun embodiment of Baron Samdi. Jeffrey Holder in Live and Let Die. What a wonderfully eccentric performance. He almost had a Vegas era Elvis vibe about him, doesn't he? And of course, another notable Baron Samdi also appeared in the fabulous black exploitation movie, Sugar Hill. I really should do a UFH on the wardrobe in black exploitation movies, shouldn't I? So cool and so fabulous. I just want to say a quick word regarding the Papa Ligba character in the wonderful American horror story, Coven. Coven. A lot of people complained about this because, as you can see, he looks like Baron Samdi, but in fact, Papa Ligba is a very different and totally beloved character in the voodoo pantheon. He's sort of a Saint Peter type. He doesn't decide who lives or dies, but he helps those who have died peacefully cross over into the spirit realm. So although American Horror Story Coven, Coven, did a fabulous job with the makeup and costume here. They got a bit of a slap on the wrist for naming the character incorrectly. And if any of you besides my friend John Larson know why I keep repeating Coven as Coven, then write in and I'll send you an Ultimate Fashion History bumper sticker. There is a pop culture reference there. Let's see who gets it. But let's get back to Baron Samdi before this turns into a theatrical mockery. Of course, such an iconic figure has been used to sell everything, and it's all based on wardrobe. There's Baron Samdi rum, of course, which I've never tried, though God only knows why not. My love of cocktail practically makes me Baron Samdi's familiar. Baron Samdi beer, and of course, Baron Samdi cigars. And what about fashion? Oh yes, fashion, our favourite. It has often borrowed a bit of the Samdi sparkle for runway and editorials. Cool, right? Well, I hope you enjoyed our Halloween special 2018. Stay tuned because last year's will play automatically. You can contact me through my website, amandahalley.com. Join our Facebook group. We always have loads of fun over there. Check out our books at our publishing company, Dean Street Press. We have a lot of books over there by people who actually bothered writing them, unlike myself and my voodoo book. I will be spending my Halloween smoking cigars, drinking rum, and watching my favorite voodoo movie, The Skeleton Key. Oh, it's so creepy, but I'll be back very soon with new episodes on the ultimate fashion history. So just click the little circle to subscribe. And until then, Happy Halloween.